Today's shir is dedicated to the Nishmas Rachaleh Basit Chaim Tzvi. As all Nalash Yurim, and I would like to also dedicate the learning of today to the Kedoshim from the terror attacks in India. We're we'll continuing in Gemara Brachis, the Afir Aleph and Aleph, and we're discussing the Sugya of Oisek B'mitzvah, Potter Min mitzvah. We saw in the previous two Shiurim that there's a fundamental Machlaikas in Rishonim how to understand the nature of this halacha of Oisek B'mitzvah, Potter Min mitzvah. that if an individual is engaged in the performance of one mitzvah, and a second mitzvah comes his way, he, he is exempt from the obligation of performing the second mitzvah. There are two ways how we can understand this exemption. One could say that technically the chiyuv of both mitzvahs is incumbent on the individual. The chiyuv of the second mitzvah is chal. The second mitzvah takes effect. The obligation is in fact chal upon the individual. But by virtue of the fact that he is now engaged in the performance of the first mitzvah, that allows him to postpone and to push aside indefinitely the performance of the second mitzvah. Or do we say that the halacha of Isaac the mitzvah, potum and mitzvah, is a complete exemption that when one is engaged in the performance of a mitzvah, and a second mitzvah comes his way, the second mitzvah isn't even chal. The obligation doesn't even take effect when one is involved in the performance of a mitzvah. And the Achreinim point out that this chakira seems to be a fundamental machlekes rishonim, as we discussed in the last two shiurim, machlekes between Toysis and Mesech HaSukkah, and the Ran in Sukkah, where Taisus in Sukkah takes the position that the exemption of Isaac from Mitzvah Potum and Mitzvah applies only if it's EF Shalakai Mishnayim, only if it's impossible to perform both Mitzvahs, it is one will have to choose either to perform one Mitzvah at the expense of another, then, says Tosos, we apply the concept of Oisik B'mitzvah, Potum and mitzvah. However, says Tosos in Sukkah, if in fact it is feasible to perform both mitzvahs without losing out on the performance of either mitzvah, there is no exemption of Oisik B'mitzvah, Potum and mitzvah in such a scenario. Since it's possible to perform both mitzvahs without giving up the performance in any way of the mitzvah, one is obligated to perform both mitzvahs. There's no exemption that since I'm already performing one mitzvah, I'm exempt from the second mitzvah. The Ran, however, disagrees. And the Ran learns that the exemption of Oisik mitzvah, part of mitzvah, is a complete exemption. The second mitzvah is completely uprooted. It doesn't take effect at all. In the previous year, we mentioned that Nechaira, the Ritva in Mesech Sukkah, learns like the second approach. The Ritva in Mesech Sukkah and Da'af Chafei raises the question, why is it necessary for the Gemara to derive this exemption of Oseik B'mitzvah Partim mitzvah from a Pasuk, as the Gemara quotes, B'shif T'chab B'Secha, Prat L'Oseik B'mitzvah, B'lech T'chab Aderech, Prat L'Chasan, why do we need Xeris HaKosov to teach us this cloud, this rule, that Oisik B'mitzvah, part of an mitzvah when one is involved in performance of one mitzvah, he's exempt from a second mitzvah that comes his way, asks the Ritva, it should be klar and posh misvara. It should be a logical idea that if one is involved in the performance of one mitzvah and a second mitzvah comes his way, that he should not have to put aside the first mitzvah to do the second mitzvah. Who says the second mitzvah is more valuable than the first mitzvah? It should be obvious misvara. Why do I need a pasuk? What does the pasuk come to teach us? Explains the ritva that the pasuk is coming to teach us 
Not that if a second mitzvah comes my way, I'm exempt. I'm not obligated to stop what I'm doing and go ahead and perform the second mitzvah. That would be obvious misvara. However, says the Ritva, what the Pasuk is teaching us is that not only am I exempt from doing the second mitzvah, it's in fact forbidden. There's a prohibition to stop the performance of mitzvah, of the first mitzvah, and now interrupt that performance of the mitzvah to perform a second mitzvah. It's forbidden, it's an iser. Says the Ritva, this is the equivalent of a person who stops performing a mitzvah to do a dvara rishus, to engage in mundane, permissible activities. In other words, we see clearly from the Ritva this second way of understanding